Hi, my name is EJ Massa. I'm known for two things, grilling meat and drinking booze. That's my reputation, and I'm proud of it. One of my fans, Air Joe, has sent me a lot of grills over the years, but finally, he sent me something that will appease the drinking side of me. About time. He sent me this. And no, it's not one half of the Donkey Kong Bongo Controller. It's the Bongo Controller. It has all you need. You can go a bong bong bong, or bam bam bam, or clap clap clap. No, it's a real barrel. And he sent it to me so I could age my meat in there. It came with a note which I read on a previous unboxing Mac. Here, roll the tape. There was a message too. In EJ's aged mead video, King Cool 2099 asked when I was going to mail EJ a wood barrel for aging. So yeah, I guess this is me doing that. And since I'm a slave to my fans, I'm gonna do that for you. Please use your power over me responsibly. It is a very well-made, oaky smelling barrel. Here is its bunghole. Look at the bunghole. Look at it. The mead I'll be making is from my traditional mead video, and I already mixed the must together for fermenting. If you'd like more details on the mead making process, you can go to that mead making video that I'll put in the link in the description below. The only difference is I'm using this honey I got from Walmart. The original gravity of the must is 1.104. Then I put the mead in my spooky basement to turn it into delicious mead. And this will take about a month. One month and three days later, it's time to rack it out of primary fermentation. I took another specific gravity reading of 0 0.998, which is bone dry. And I would know just how dry bones are. Because my best friend is dry bones from Super Mario. Definitely not because I have contact with various other skeletons. I set some aside to get a baseline taste test before aging, and then I racked the rest into this jar for secondary fermentation, which is mostly to make sure I got all the sediment out, letting it settle out to the bottom. And I'll check back on that in about a week. This is the baseline test right at primary fermentation, just to see what it is before aging. Mm-hmm, that's, that's unmistakably a traditional mead, that, that kind of semi-beer smell uh, with a little bit of, like, cough drop. <laughs> Let me have a taste. Oh, this is a lot drier than the ones I've made before, but it's actually kind of nice because it's, it's, it's really smooth. Even though it's dry, it's smooth. There's um, very little sweetness to speak of, so and look how, I mean, it's really, really clear. So I think this is going to make a good baseline to see how it ages, because it still has kind of an alcoholy uh, taste to it. So let's see how the barrel does. While that meat is in secondary, it's time to cure the barrel so it doesn't leak when I put mead in it. Don't want to waste a precious drop of mead. Luckily, there's some instructions that tell you how to do it. First, you rinse out the barrel and drain it a few times. Then I'm gonna use a rubber mallet to hammer in the spigot, which is a great way to channel your inner burning rage. Then I'll pour hot, but not boiling water into the barrel, then close the barrel. And you'll see it's already leaking in a few areas. Apparently, we'll let that set for an hour to a week, that's quite a range, until the leaks stop. 24 hours later and, yep, the barrel's still leaking. 48 hours in and the barrel was still wet and leaky, but weirdly, two hours later I checked on it and the leak was sealed up and the outside was completely dry. And you can see, a lot of the inner char started to stain the outside. That's pretty neat. Now I have to drain the barrel of the aged water, first by removing the bung, and then the water can drain easily. If you don't remove that bung, it won't, it won't, it won't pour. And there we have barrel aged water. Yum. I want to sniff it. Definitely smells like charred wood. Should I take a sip? Should I? No. Tastes like slightly wooded water. Like a stick has been in your drink. Not great.
The barrel should be still wet and cured, so we'll put the meat immediately into the barrel to age. Don't let the barrel dry out or it might leak again. Now we'll do an experiment of aging in the barrel versus aging in the regular glass bottle. My meat has been in secondary for about a week, mostly to let whatever was left floating sink to the bottom. And to really reinforce that this is an experiment, I'll use this science flask to age the mead and compare it to the barrel over here. And then filled up that flask and then filled up that barrel and oh no, I think I overfilled the, the flask. Oh geez, I guess I have to drink some. And then I sealed up the flask with a cork and the barrel with its bung and I'll let that age for a bit and see if there's a huge difference between the two. If anything, these look really cool. The instructions say that a new barrel could age the liquid fairly quickly because it has new char and such. So one week later, I decided to test it to see if I should stop now or try for another week. And while it was woody tasting, I felt it could use another week to age. A total of two weeks later, and it's time to taste test. I don't see much of a color difference in the aged mead. The bottled mead looks so beautiful. It's crystal clear. This is definitely the clearest mead I've made so far. Not that it matters anything, but it is clear. It looks very refreshing, and boy am I thirsty. Side by side, I personally can't see a huge color difference, so there's only one way to tell them apart. So I only aged these two weeks because um, the one in the barrel, the barrel's still fresh, so they say it ages quicker. So aging for two weeks in a bottle, you know, it's not a, it's not a huge length of time, but I just wanted to give, you know, the, the barrel a fair chance. I don't want it to be, you know, over aged or something. So let's just take a look at them. Um, they both look very similar color wise. They're both very clear. Like if I couldn't tell them apart, if you, if these, if I didn't know what these were already, this is not a blind taste test. I would not be able to tell these apart. Um, I'm going to sniff this one first. This is definitely the mead that was aged in the bottle because there's not, there's just that meaty smell to it. It's almost like it's almost like an apple juice in some way, or an applesauce smell. Which, there's no apples in here. And it has, you know, the faintest of lemon smells. It's actually not that fragrant. And uh, then we go over to this guy. Oh, you definitely smell the oak. There's almost like a, a vanilla smell to it. And maybe the very faintest of meat, it actually the oak kind of overpowers it. It's a very oaky smell. So let me taste the first one. Ooh, this is very good. This is a very good version of just a traditional mead. It's very drinkable. It's like a white wine, like a white table wine. Like um, meads I've made in the past have had a very ale-like Taste, this does not have that. It's more of a drinkable wine, white wine. Um, I'm getting a little bit of that lemon, uh, zest, or it orange zest, but it, it tastes lemony to me right now. Um, very good. That's a very good mead. So let's try the aged in a barrel mead. Oh. Very strong oak taste, but it is good. Wow. It's like a very heavy, oaky taste. Almost like um, when you smell whiskey, that's how it tastes. It, yeah, definitely like a vanilla notes. Um, very earthy. Um, and it's like a very well-aged white wine, actually. Uh, barrel aged wine. That is really good. It adds a lot of good complexity to the mead because sometimes it can be flat. This is not really that flat. It does have a good body to it. It doesn't taste thin. Um, the, the, the traditional mead, it tastes like a good table wine, but this adds another, another kick to it, another um, bassy note to it. I mean, this is, it, since as coming from a whiskey drinker, this is more akin to what I'm used to. It's not like it turned it into whiskey, but it's, it's more of a, a deeper flavor that I enjoy. Like I would sip this while, 
you know, reading a book, as men with beards do. This was great. It really was. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the traditional mead. I, uh, you know, because it's very refreshing, drinkable, um, goes good with your dinner. And this one is almost like I would have this after dinner while I was relaxing in my easy chair. Oh, I actually recommend that barrel for home use, you know? You put some of your meat in there, maybe you bottle the rest of it, and then you can put that barrel on your shelf and it's like a decoration. And people will be like, oh, cool barrel that you have on your shelf. I'm like, yes, I'm actually aging meat in there. And then you just put the spigot and you give them a glass of it and they'll be like, wow, you're the best host ever. So <laughs> I do recommend that. If you're into brewing, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a novelty. Um, it's not something I would, uh, you know, do every time. Like I would just do this or do my Viking's blood. That's another thing. I should probably age that Viking's blood. That would be amazing. Maybe that's one of the things I do next. I also want to try out aging clear spirits in there. I think that would be fun too. And maybe that's something I'll do. Thanks, Air Joe, for sending another thing and giving me another show idea. Um, I wonder what you'll send next. Until next time. Bye. Hey, Red Nintendo Man. It's a me, a Mario. Dude, shut up. Do you want to see the best controller ever made? Is it the Dreamcast controller? What? No, pff, idiot. It's this. The bongos? It's the bongo controller. It has all you need. You can go a bong bong bong, or bam bam bam, or clap clap clap. It's controller perfection. Is there an analog stick? Analog sticks are for cowards, you stupid baby.